COP28 ended with, ended with a bang as 200 countries agreed for the first time to transition away from fossil fuels in a major move to combat climate change. The president of COP28 praised the deal but stressed the need for nations to follow through with tangible actions. So could nuclear energy finally get its chance to shine in the wake of this agreement? I have Yahoo Finance's Rick Newman with his thoughts. So Rick, I mean, a lot of people thought we weren't going to be able to get all these countries on the same page here, but help us manage expectations. Yeah, sure. So there was a side agreement at this uh, UN climate conference where 20, uh, 22 nations led by the United States said they, uh, they pledged basically to increase nuclear uh, power production by, by 300 percent by, by, by the year 2050. Um, and the reason this caught my eye, Rochelle, is every time I talk to energy economists about how do you get to these targets, these climate targets, uh, reducing emissions and getting to something like zero carbon emissions from the power sector, just about everybody says you need a lot more nuclear power to do this. So, so I've been looking into this. I mean, the, the plus of nuclear power is it's a lot safer than, than people think. There is literally no pollution in the generation of the power. Um, and of course, it's, a, it's efficient. Um, but it's not being adopted as fast as a lot of advocates would like because it's still expensive. Uh, there are some subsidies for nuclear power in the uh, Green Energy Subsidy Act that President Biden signed in 22. But it's just still not coming to market. And without nuclear power, you, you really just you cannot install enough wind and solar production to get to these climate targets and slash emissions as we need to do. Because the problem with a renewable energy is you can't store the power. It is not cost effective to store the power. You have to use it as, as it is generated. Um, and that means that when the wind is not shining or, the, uh, excuse me, the wind is not blowing or the sun is not shining, you need something else. And for now, that's natural gas and coal. Nuclear power would be a great way to uh, replace nuclear, excuse me, natural gas and coal. It's just the regulatory hurdles, cost problems. So there are people who would love to sort of establish some breakthrough here. We're just having a tough time getting there. And Rick, we know that there's an appetite from people like Elon Musk, some politicians, but in terms of consumers, this idea of having nuclear energy and this whole not in my backyard, how does that play into how far nuclear energy can go? Well, there's one very interesting idea, which is to take a lot of the coal plants that are the dirtiest, that's the dirtiest form of fossil fuel, and we are retiring coal plants, and to actually put nuclear facilities, nuclear power plants, right on those same locations. You could use some of the existing infrastructure. Infrastructure It's already connecting to the grid, for example. You could, a lot of the workers at the uh, existing power plants could work at a new a nuclear power plant. Some of, the, some of them would need new licensing, but not all of them. Some of them would, not, would just be able to go over to new jobs. And, and it's, it's still not in anybody's backyard. You're not putting that in anybody's backyard. People do have concerns about the safety of nuclear power because we all remember something bad happened in Chernobyl, uh, something bad happened in Fukushima in Japan in 2011 when, when there was a tidal wave, and then there was Three Mile Island, I think, back in 1979. Um, if you look at the uh, safety record of nuclear power, it, it actually is vastly safer than fossil fuels when you account for uh, air pollution and all the harm, the deaths and the illnesses caused by air pollution. I mean, there is no air pollution from nuclear power. So um, the people need to understand that there's new technology that is much safer. Uh, reactors are actually a lot smaller these days. There have been some breakthroughs in terms of the size of these reactors. Um, but we just have a long way to go in terms of actually deploying these things, getting through the regulatory process, adapting the regulatory process for the new technology because it's still geared toward old technology, and then getting the cost down. So we may need government help if we're ever going to adopt more, a lot more nuclear power. And certainly having to be creative in this transition to, to cleaner energy here. I appreciate you breaking all of that down for us. Our very own Rick Newman. See ya.